You are welcome to another video of Juniper Security Associate course. In this section, we will talk about Juniper SOX route-based IPsec VPN implementation, which is another and preferred method of IPsec VPN implementation in Juniper SOX device. In the previous section, we have discussed the policy-based method, and in this section, we will concentrate on route-based method. As we have discussed in the previous section, with the route-based IPsec implementation method, unlike policy-based method, we configure a virtual interface for the tunnel. In route-based IPsec VPN configuration, unlike policy-based IPsec configuration, in which we have sent interesting traffic to the IPsec VPN tunnel by configuring a policy, here, we send traffic to the IPsec VPN tunnel through static or dynamic routing. Also, we have discussed with configuring a virtual interface for IPsec tunnel, we can configure whatever features that we configure in normal interfaces. For example, it is possible to configure dynamic or static routing through virtual tunnel interface and access list, quality of service, multicasting, and many other features within the virtual tunnel interface. With policy-based IPsec VPN, we don't have most of these features. This is the topology that we will use in this section to configure route-based IPsec VPN. This is the same topology that we have used in the previous section for configuring policy-based IPsec VPN. There are two Juniper SOX devices with the name of Virtual SOX 1 and Virtual SOX 2. These two devices are connected to each other directly and through the interface Giga Ethernet 000 in the subnet 192.168.1.24 and in untrust zone the IP address of virtual SX1 is 251 and the other side is 252. Virtual SX1 is connected to the LAN network through interface Giga Ethernet 001 and in the trust zone the IP address 172.16.1.24 SH24 is configured for this network. In virtual SX2 the LAN interface in the trust zone is simulated using loopback interface in the subnet 172.16.2.24. The difference of the topology compared to the previous section are displayed with a red color in this figure. We create a virtual interface for the IPsec tunnel with the name of ST0 or Secure Tunnel 0 and configure it in a new zone with the name of VPN. Since a virtual interface is created for the IPsec tunnel, we are allowed to configure the IP address on each side of the IPsec VPN tunnel. One side is 10.10.10.1 and the other side is 10.10.10.2. The other difference is that unlike policy-based IPsec VPN configuration, in which we didn't create any route to reach remote LAN network. Here we create a route to the remote LAN subnet through the tunnel interface. Before starting IPsec configuration, some basic configuration are already added into the virtual SOX devices. These are exactly what we have configured and explained in the previous section, and here they are just repeated. The host name and the IP address of interfaces are configured and interfaces are added to the appropriate zone according to the topology. All system services and protocol traffic are permitted to virtual SOX devices with the host inbound traffic command. I allowed IKE in a separate line. In the untrust interface, it was not necessary here since I allowed all protocol and system service traffic. I wanted only to show that for IPsec connectivity, we need to allow IKE to the Juniper SRX devices. Then we have two uh, policies with the name of default permit from untrust to trust zone and from trust to the untrust zone which permit every traffic.
Here I have prepared a diagram which shows the configuration steps of route-based IPsec VPN. This diagram is mostly similar to what we have shown and discussed in the policy-based IPsec VPN configuration. Therefore, I will only explain the differences that I have distinguished with a red color. These are three steps to be configured to create an IPsec VPN. In the first step is to create an IPsec virtual interface with the name of, for example, ST0 or Secure Tunnel 0. Assign the IP address, assign ST0 tunnel interface to a brand new zone and create new policies between the new zone and existing zones. IKE phase on is to negotiate IKE security association. If you want to know the details of this phase, please look at the previous section. IKE phase two is to negotiate IPsec security association. This section is also discussed in the previous section. What is new in this section is to bind configured tunnel interface to the IPsec VPN so that IKE phase one, IKE phase two, and tunnel interface are tied to each other. What is new and different in the route-based IPsec VPN is that in policy-based IPsec VPN, we configured policy to route interesting traffic through the IPsec tunnel. But in route-based IPsec VPN configuration, we create a virtual tunnel interface. For example, with the name of ST0, which is routable. We can use a static or dynamic routing to route traffic between LAN subnets through tunnel interface. However, we use here a static routing to forward traffic over IPsec virtual tunnel interface. We also must assign virtual tunnel interface to a zone. It can be assigned to existing untrust zone or to completely brand new zone. Here we assign new virtual interface interface to the new VPN zone. To allow traffic between LAN subnets through tunnel interface, we have to allow interesting traffic between trust and the new VPN zone. If you configure ST0 interface into existing untrust zone, then interesting traffic must be added into existing policies between trust and untrust zone. To tie configured virtual interface into existing IKE phase on and phase two, we will add a new command to bind ST0 tunnel interface to the IPsec VPN configuration, which is shown here with the red color. These are the configurations that I have already prepared for the route-based IPsec VPN tunnel. Most of the configurations are copy of the configuration that we have implemented and discussed in the previous section, policy-based IPsec VPN. Therefore, only the new configurations will be discussed here. In the first three lines, which are new, a new virtual tunnel interface ST0 is created. The IP address is assigned to the interface and interface assigned to a new VPN zone. Then we create a static route to forward traffic with remote LAN destinations through the tunnel. IKE phase one and IKE phase two configurations have not changed and they are the same as the policy-based IPsec VPN configuration discussed in the previous section. The only change is to bind new virtual interface tunnel to the IPsec configuration, which we configure with this command, set security IPsec VPN, bind interface and the name of virtual interface tunnel. We also have to create new policies between trust zone and the VPN zone to permit interesting traffic through the tunnel. Here we create two policies from zone trust to the zone VPN and vice versa from the VPN zone to the trust zone to permit everything between remote LAN subnet. Now we can copy the configuration in virtual SX1 and virtual SX2.
This is the configuration of virtual SX1. Copy, paste, and then commit. And also virtual SX2, the same configuration. Copy. And virtual SX2. Paste. And then commit. Now, how we can test and monitor IPsec VPN tunnel connectivity? First, we send traffic between two LAN subnets to make sure that the connectivity is already established. Ping is established, and to make sure that traffic is routed through the tunnel interface, and then trace route. And you can see that the traffic is forwarded through two intermediate hubs. But to make sure, we have also some IPsec specific monitoring commands as we have discussed in the previous section the commands starting with show security IKE are related to uh, IKE phase one and IPsec they are related to IK phase two and the most important commands are IKE security association which shows the IK phase one is up. You can see also the details to see the parameters negotiated between two virtual SX devices. The same command for IK phase two also exists for security association. There are up between these two virtual SX devices and you can also check the details and to make sure it is bonded with Tunnel interface, as you can see, it is bonded with the interface ST00. And still, to make sure that traffic are forwarding through the IPsec tunnel, you can send the traffic between two subnets and then check the S statistic which shows security IPsec S statistic. At the moment, show security IPsec S statistics, then num shows the number of encrypted 68 and decrypted 70 packet and then we send traffic again the number still has not changed and we send ping again two three four packet and we check again the statistic the number has changed from to 68 to 72 and from the 70 to 74 we can also check the status of tunnel interface with show interface tests. As we can see, ST00 is up and up with the IP address. It is also possible to monitor routing tables to make sure that the traffic to the remote LAN is routed through the virtual tunnel interface with show route. For example, the destination uh, 172, 16, 1, S-24, as you can see, it is routed through the virtual tunnel interface.